tonight, we're pulling mad wires. All right, cut. So what problem has arisen here? The, the depth of where the conduit is inside here is more than I got right here. So I'm trying to get, I literally need probably another half inch of bit to get into there to get that piece knocked out. There's a little piece just holding it up. Let's see if this is enough. A few moments later. So we solved the problem? Yes, yeah. We took it, I made another hole here, an access hole to get to the, the tube, the conduit that made the wires all gonna run through and then send it back from the front of the, where I can get a straight shot through to it, ran it in, fished it here, and then pushed it through the outside wall where I got the wire back to where we need to get it to the battery connection. Thank God. Inside this foam cavity, there's a PVC tube that runs from here to the back that has wire running through it. We're tapping in right here and uh, drilling into the side of the PVC tube so we can fish some wires through here instead of coming all the way back and around. Isn't that right, Dave? Yes, sir. Labeling. Very important when you're running wire. Very important. Make sure every wire you run has a label on the front and a label on the back, especially when you're not hooking it directly up. We're going to be a little in between with wiring and hooking everything up to all the electric. So you would definitely want to label both ends so that you know where everything goes. So every one of these little coils is tagged. Tagged on this end, tagged on the other end. We know who's what. Hey, forget about it. We pretty much got all of our rough wire our rough wiring run um, everything is run for the oxygenator for the pumps for the for the circulator right LED lighting pump in pump out circulate oxygenate live well all the electrics run for that our LED lighting our electronics our trolling motor floodlight floodlights so everything's Run back to the panel. Um, Dave, what, do we, what gauge wire are we running everything? Everything in? for the boat is done in 12, except for the feed to the panel. The feed to the panel is done in 10 gauge. 10 gauge stranded wire. 12 is what we're running. 12 gauge strand is what we're running out from, the, from our switch panel, our fuse switch panel to all of our devices. We're running a 12 gauge stranded wire. I'm not saying you should drink while working with power tools. But if you're gonna, it should be a founder's. You got something in mind or you want me to go off onto one of my little project thingies? Cause you're gonna be just dialed in right yeah, there. Just, yeah, you need a cord, you need yeah, a I need cord. cord right there. I got soldering, it. Iron. Yeah, I got that. Hey, Ron. Have you ever like ran a crew or anything? Yeah, for many years. You're pretty terrible at running one other person. <laughs> All our electrical connections here, we're soldering the joints as opposed to crimp connectors or wire nuts or duct tape. First step, when you guys are, when you're doing a wiring for any connection, is the first thing is to put the shrink tube on. If you don't put the shrink tube on before you make the solder connection, you're gonna have to cut the wire and slide it on and then re-solder it again. All this is a little heat shrink tube. After you make the connection, you slide this over, slide it over the connection, hit it with the gun, heat gun, until it pulls tight and it's waterproof, it's not gonna break and it'll hold everything together. So what Dave's doing here is he's got about an inch, actually it's even more than an inch, stripping plenty of wire and then wrapping, wrapping them around together like such so that they are physically connected pretty good. Get this flux pen here and this is a, an, an acid that cleans the, the wires and gets them free of any chemical pollutants on there that way when we go to put the heat and the solder on there that the solder takes to it squeeze the trigger on the solder gun get her all nice and toasty yeah smoke Put solder on there let that dry for a couple seconds or, yeah, or cool, off, yeah, cool off yeah let it cool for a couple seconds so what are you doing there, Dave? Just clipping off some loose wires to make it easier when you slide the tube, shrink tube over. You don't want anything to snag it on the way over and punch a hole in it. It has become one. Hit it. Hit 
keeps any moisture from getting in there and causing any corrosion on that joint. So sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes your terminal connector is too small for your battery terminals. You can A, cut your wire, clamp a new terminal connector on there, or B, when you don't have that terminal connector, we, uh, we just took the vice grips, clamp down good and tight on there, get the biggest buddy you have, in this case, Dave Haas, <laughs> going about 285 on a diet, and we drill that bad boy out, and it fits on there. Woo! Look at that. No more stacked heat on your terminal connector because we got that Hydra, baby. And now it's time for a BTC intermission. So one of the major changes that we made in the boat layout from our beginning plan to where we are now is shifting the batteries from the back of the boat to the front. My initial plan was to have all the batteries in a battery compartment in the back of the boat like you would have with a bass boat. Um, but when Jeff Little from Torquedo came up to set us up with the Torquedo, he really uh, taught us a lot and explained how a non-planing hull boat like this will move a lot faster in the water when it's level, not nose up. You get nose up, you get a lot of drag in the back of the boat and you lose a lot of speed. So we made the decision at that point to shift the three batteries that run the front trolling motor and the one that doubles as a house battery to midsection of the boat. This gets us more flat in the water as opposed to nose up and um, pretty happy with where it's at right now. Can you get the camera roll before you clean? No, I just want to crimp it on here. No, this is part of it. Oh, okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> It doesn't get it. it. Doesn't get that we're filming this. Let's go ahead and do it. Ah! It's all part of it, Dave. We must see it all, Dave. These are pretty cool terminal connectors. You tell us about them, will you? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> no, these are badass terminal yeah, connectors. Yeah. These are uh, they're a shrink tube connector. You just make a little crimp here at the end to hold the wire. Strip yourself about a half inch of wire. Thread that bad boy on there, right? That goes in there, that gets right up in that. Yeah. Just a very beautiful. Sometimes you gotta go in there, like, that in. There you go. like this, like that. There you Give go. it a little squeezins. That's it. Right? Yep, that's it. So that's part of the connection. Right now, yeah. it's mechanically connected. The shrink tube that's on these has like a, an epoxy on it, resin on the inside. So when you shrink this, when this thing shrinks tight, this thing bites onto the wire coating and it's waterproof, airproof, everything. It's, there's no nothing getting inside this connector. So what we have is we have a mechanical connection with crimping the, the, the metal housing inside that onto the wire. And then we have a chemical connection where we hit this with the heat, shrinks that shrink tube, and the epoxy bonds to the coating on the wire. See how you get that connection in there? So one thing I wanted to point out to you guys Besides the fact that I'm wearing this signed Scott Martin Challenge hat that I may have just won over the weekend from Scott Martin himself in a Scott Martin Challenge. This boat was set up with a light socket back here on the starboard side, this side of the boat in the back. And my intention is to put a Yolotech power stick back here to hook up a GoPro. I'm moving that, that power socket, that navigation light socket to the other side of the boat. And here's the reason why. So you've got this power stick sticking up. The guy in the back of the boat, most people cast like this, right? So that thing is gonna be in the way of the dude casting. So with respect to my tournament partner or guy I'm out fishing with, I'm gonna move it to, whoop. We moved it over here to this side of the boat, right? When you're going down this side, it's out of your way. And when you're over here, she's out of your way. So it makes more sense to have it over here. The other reason is we have our power, our uh, micro power pole here, which will have a rod sticking up. So all the obtrusion, all the obstructions will be on this side of the boat, kind of in one area, not all over the place. So for me, it just tightens the boat up, makes it more usable, makes it better for the guy in the back. He has a more enjoyable fishing experience. So the Yolotech stick plugs into your nav light socket, 
provides energy, provides electricity to it, and this thing extends up to 54 inches. I believe it's 54. And up here you can hook, you can get mounts to hook an iPhone, to hook your GoPro, and on the back here has ports for a USB cord so that you can have your GoPro or iPhone or whatever recording device running all day being charged from this nav light pole or that nav light socket on this Yolotech stick. Pretty rad, man. We got power to the light socket and now we have the Yolotech power stick plugged in and as you see, we got juice. This is the Yolotech Ultimate LED deck light. Dude, this little bad boy has 500 lumens. Connects as you see right in the back with the USB. That thing will pivot this way, that way, turn. And um, I'm wearing glasses because don't look directly at this light. It is, it, is a, it is a spotlight, 500 lumens of burn your eye retinas out. So pretty awesome light. <laughs> it will light, light up the sky. And um, you know, especially for the Thursday night tournaments or, or your night tournaments, you got you can you can look right in your live well with this thing point it in your live well if you got boat problems point it right into your hatch and we can do the we'll be doing weigh-ins right here on this deck so pretty awesome light man lumens but that maybe i wouldn't get it you don't want it right up on you like if you turn them on and you're like out at night yeah you don't want them right up on you you right. want them a little behind you like i put yeah, most of them i put them behind where the c post is or at least yeah. at the c post so it's not if you're running if you want to put them on yeah. They're not on you. In your face. They're not in your face. Because they blind away, you They'll take night. away your night vision. Right. I mean, red's not really going to hurt you that bad. That's no, thing. red's not that bad. No. It's one of the better colors for bugs, too, yeah. I was reading. Yeah, no white. And blue. And blue. Blue's bad for bugs. Blue's bad for bugs? Yeah. Really? I bought blue. Yeah. Um, amber, I think, is the best color. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Well, it takes a sell amber. Like, I don't think blue water does. Yeah. But, but anyhow. I've got enough for five strips down the gunnel, but you're saying that's too much? Yeah, I'd stay with the... What do you have? Two tens, a 12, and eight. Three tens. Yeah, and eight. And, uh, and this 18. They're all tens. All three of them are tens, right? You have the eight in the middle. It doesn't I would, matter. I, I would get rid it, of the eight. Okay. The eight second quarter light. That's, that's right, but it's red. Yeah. Do we want to put red light in the live well? No. No. Okay. I don't know. Red light, red light. Right, so, so we got rid of that. You missed. <laughs> Another thing I want to address is the wiring for the trolling motor and the wiring for the depth finder. First off, the trolling motor, we used six gauge wire. We ran our neutral leg around the boat this direction. We caught our first battery over there on the negative terminal, ran in series over here, and then caught the positive leg on up to the trolling motor. We also worked in a 50 amp trolling motor breaker over there. So you run into any issues, it gets hot, it pops the breaker before we start frying stuff. Uh, the other thing it, that was super important is keeping the depth finder uh, power wires away from the trolling motor power wire. There's just a lot of juice that runs through that trolling motor. And if you get that, if, if you're running side by side with your lines, uh, supplying juice to the depth finder, you're gonna get a lot of interference on your screen. By far the most intense part of this boat build, by far, has been the electric. Um, I think we've even got my main man Dave here a little bit spun out. Come on in a little closer, Dave, so, they, so the folks home can see you. Um, but there's just so much going on in here with the LED lighting that's running around the deck, throwing in the light holders in the back for, for, for uh, the yellow tech stick, fish finders, uh, hydro wave, the hydro wave, the little mini jack plate, just a lot. Trolling oh, motor. Oh, oh, trolling motor, the stereo system. So that's, that's by far been the biggest challenge is just making sure we get it all and get it run right run tight, clean, and it's all gotta be 100%. Evidently, we use these hydras, which are pff, worth their weight in gold. These things, you can put so many more connections. I mean, a lot of guys stack them, and you put a bunch, stack a stuff, bunch of stuff on one terminal, it gets real tough to keep that tight. These things, you can put one, two, you know, three things on each one, and you're not gonna have to worry about them. These things cinch down tight. This is all power here. And then we, uh, we put a grounding bar in so that we don't have interference, hopefully, from our fit to the fish finder yeah, and the stereo. Know. So, you know, everything's grounded. We have fuses on all the back of the switch panels so that 
God forbid, like something gets caught in a pump, it just breaks that, pops that breaker, and you go back, you put a breaker in, you clean the pump out, you get a short somewhere, you know, wire breaks. There's always that, there's always that chance, but we're trying to make it clean. I mean, we have to zip tie all these wires up still and tighten everything up, but we're we're real, real close. Real so, close. Real close. Real yeah. close. We're probably you know a couple hours from putting the deck down on top of this. I can't wait. So, I'm hoping to float tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, me too. So I think that's about it, man. That's about it for tonight. Almost there. <laughs>